Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode two of the Leathercraft podcast. Today, I'm going to be discussing something that major companies do not want you to know. They don't want you to know that genuine leather is actually the cheapest leather you could possibly buy. So before I get into that a little bit more and explain why genuine leather is the worst quality leather, I'm going to kind of explain to you the different types of cuts that you could get from one single hide and the characteristics of each one, the quality, how good it is, um, so that you can understand a little bit more what I'm talking about and why genuine leather is such a bad quality leather. So that is my goal for this episode today. And hopefully, my hope is that you can use that whenever you go out and you are buying products. So there are three main cuts that you could potentially get from one single hide from one animal. And I'm not talking about like If you were to lay out one hide on the floor and cut it up into different pieces, I'm I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like if you were to split the hide to make three separate hides. So if you were to look at the thickness, say, say you had a hide that was, I don't know, one inch thick. (laughs) It's probably not actually going to be that thick, but for the sake of simplicity, Say you have a hide that's one inch thick. You could potentially get two or three different cuts out of that one hide. So if you were to cut that thickness in half to make two hides that are each a half inch thick, that's kind of what we're talking about here, if that makes sense. So we're not like splitting the hide into different pieces. We are quite literally making several different hides from one hide that would look generally the same. I mean, they would all have the same parts of the skin. They would all have, you know, the back part of the animal. They'd all have the belly. They'd all have where the legs were. They'd They'd each have that. They'd look identical, but it would be the same hide split into two or three different ways. So the first cut that I'm going to start with is the best one. It's the best of the best. And that cut is full grain. So where possible, you always wanna look for something that is made with full grain leather. It is going to cost you a lot more outright, but it it will be so much better for you in the long run. Full grain leather, if you're looking at a hide that still has the hair on it, you shave off all of that hair, that very top layer, the outside of that animal's skin, that is the full grain cut of the hide. So that is going to contain the part of the skin that was exposed to the elements, all the rain, the snow, that is going to be the most durable cut of the hide because it it was exposed to all of those things during the animal's life. The natural fibers that that is contained in any anybody's skin, any animal's skin, um, there are natural fibers that make up that hide that are woven together. And in that full grain cut on the very top, those fibers are woven so tightly that you could quite literally depend on full grain leather with your life. It can withstand thousands of pounds before it starts to break apart. If you worked back in the day say for a logging company or something and you were hanging in the trees what they used was full grain leather for their harnesses and things like that is what was traditionally used where safety was concerned if you were going to be hanging up in the air um 
or if you you know needed something that was very strong and durable they used full grain leather so by by purchasing a bag or whatever else that's full grain leather you can know that it is going to be very strong and very durable and it's also going to look beautiful too it has a wonderful patina that just gets better with time you can see all of the natural qualities of the animal's skin in that leather as well um so you will see you know if there were any scars or if there um, was a brand that was put onto the animal Um, during its life, you will still see those markings on the hide. But any good leather crafter that knows what they're doing is going to work around those major blemishes. Um, They may include a few minor things, but that really only serves to make your product more unique, to set it apart from the other products, even if it's the exact same thing. You know, if you get two wallets, they could still look different. The color could be slightly different. You know, there could be slightly different uh, markings. The grain can look a little bit different. And that adds to the quality, that adds to the niceness of it because it makes it more unique. So don't worry about having any major scars or anything on your product if you are buying something that's genuine leather uh, because any leather crafter is going to work around any major scarring that happens to be on that hide they they want their products to look as good and high quality as possible so they're not going to have a giant scar or a giant bug bite on on their product they are going to work around it because they don't it's not going to look good (laughs) it's just not going to look good but there may be you know very small minor imperfections um, that will serve to make that product more unique even to another way that you can know if somebody is using full grain leather is if they have some sort of disclaimer somewhere on their product page or on their website that says something to the effect of this is a natural product and it will it may vary slightly in color it may have um, slight scarring from the animal or this or that but it will look beautiful it will look high quality still and it will just make that um, that piece more unique If they say something like that, something to that effect on their page, you can know that they are using full grain leather because that is a specific characteristic of full grain leather. So a lot of times um, any leather crafter is going to put that somewhere on their website so that you can know and be aware of that fact because that's not something that everybody understands I mean, genuine leather is used in probably at least 90% of all leather goods today. And then top grain leather probably is used for another 9% of um, any leather goods today. And that last 1% is full grain leather. So full grain leather really is not that widely used, but the quality is going to be so, so worth it. Another characteristic of full grain leather is the smell. If you've ever walked into a small store or something and saw some leather goods and you could just smell the leather coming from those goods, it's it's probably full grain leather, It more than likely. I mean, it just has a, a wonderful smell that lasts forever that you can continue to smell as you use the product. So that that classic leather smell that everybody knows about comes from full grain leather. You're not going to get that with top grain or genuine leather with the other cuts that I'm going to talk about. I mean, top grain, maybe you could maybe get it from top grain, but it wouldn't be quite as strong or or potent if if you get something with top grain leather. 
The next cut of leather is called top grain leather. And this is also a very good quality leather. It can be a great option for, you know, if you don't want to spend quite as much money to get something that's full grain, but you still want to get something that's really good quality, you can go with top grain leather and it will still last you a good 10, 15 years. It won't last the rest of your lifetime, but it will it will last you at least a decade as as long as it's good top grain leather, not all top grain leather is created equal. There are better quality top grains and lower quality top grains. And that's because top grain leather is basically that middle section of the animal's skin. So what they do to get top grain leather is they'll either split off that full grain cut or they'll sand it down. So they'll sand off any of those blemishes and things that are visible on the top of the leather. They'll sand it down so that you don't get that anymore. So that it's nice and perfect and smooth and there aren't any imperfections on it. So if that's the case, if they're just sanding off that top layer, chances are that top grain leather is going to still be a very, very good quality. And it can still be a good quality too if they like if they split that full grain cut off. But it's more likely that you're going to get that skin that's lower down and you don't want that because that's where that genuine leather comes from. So in the middle layer of the animal's skin, those natural fibers in the skin that are all woven together, they're, they're still pretty tightly woven. They're still pretty strong and durable but it is it is a little bit looser than on the top on that full grain cut. So it will start to break down and come apart over time. And top grain leather is used for a lot of different things like for clothing, any leather pants or a leather jacket that you get is probably going to be a top grain leather because top grain leather tends to be a little bit more supple it's easier to move around and so it's really good for clothing if it's something that you're going to be wearing and you have to be able to have (laughs) mobility in it then that is um, a great option for that it's also used a lot of time in like luxury cars if they have real leather in their cars more than likely it is going to be top grain leather because It'll be nice and perfect and luxury looking. Um, So there can be some really good pros to choosing top grain leather, but you do want to be a little bit more cautious um, with top grain leather because you could get a really good cut, but you could also get that, that lower quality um, that's further down on the animal skin. That's that's not as nice. That's not as tightly woven together. So there we have full grain leather, the best of the best, and then after that is top grain, which is still really great, uh, but not quite as good. And finally, at the very very bottom, we have genuine leather. Now this genuine leather, technically yes, it is real leather but it is the cheapest. This is the part of the animal's hide that is on the inside of its body. So it's the part of the skin that's basically holding in all of the organs and everything, (laughs) keeping that from moving around. So it's going to be soft. It's going to not be very durable, especially compared to the outside layer of the animal's skin that is, you know, in all the rain and the snow and the elements. It's going to be a lot more soft, a lot less durable. And it is, it is real leather, but it's not going to have that premium look to it. It's kind of like, for example, if you've got someone who works in construction, for example, their skin, I mean, they're working with their hands, their skin has to be tough and strong to be able to withstand all of the work that they're doing 
versus if you have somebody that works maybe in an office where they're sitting at a computer and they're typing and, and calling people all day, their their skin isn't going to be quite as tough. It'll be a little bit more soft and it'll be more prone to um, getting hurt if they do go and do anything that um, requires a lot of hard work on the hands. So that's kind of like the difference between full grain leather and um, genuine leather. You've got that difference where one is really strong, really durable because it's been out in the elements, it's been working hard, and the other is a little more soft and and it's not going to be quite as durable because it hasn't needed to be quite as durable. Genuine leather also isn't going to have that really nice, um, beautiful, natural finish on the top. With all full grain leather and with some top grain leather as well, um, the tanneries, when they're tanning that hide, they're going to want to bring out the natural quality and that natural look of the leather as much as possible. They're going to want to enhance it and show it off. Whereas with genuine leather, they're going to more than likely cover it up because that it's that bottom cut. It's not going to look very good. So most of the time with genuine leather, they actually put a plastic coating over the top of it. Um, it's usually like airbrushed or it's some sort of, you know, vinyl, uh, PVC, polyurethane, something like that, which, by the way, is really bad for the environment. It can release a lot of toxins whenever they're making it, so it's not a good deal. But because Genuine Leather is such a cheap cut, they are going to finish it off with some sort of plastic on the top. And that plastic is what is going to flake off over time. So if you've ever bought a bag, say you went to, to Target or, or Macy's or something, I don't know. And you bought a bag that said made with genuine leather and you're like, oh, great, genuine leather. That's awesome. That means it's good, real leather and it's for a great deal. I'm gonna get this bag, it looks awesome. And then you start using it and over time, it starts to wear off, it starts to to chip and flake. That is that, that plastic finish over the top that is coming off over time. That is not going to happen with a good quality leather because they're not going to be adding that extra layer to cover it up on the top. So with genuine leather, you are going to get that flaking over time. Um, Any high stress point area, like for handles on a bag, for example, um, that will start to break apart over time um, because of all of the stress that it's under. And it's only going to last you a good two, three years at most before it's just breaking apart and chipping and it just doesn't look good anymore. Whereas good quality leather, like full grain leather, it will only look better with time. Full grain leather develops a beautiful patina and that it kind of just soaks in all of the oils and the things around it. It's very porous um, and it just, it looks better the more that you use it. So anytime you see someone pull out their wallet or something and it looks nice and worn and weathered and beautiful, that is going to be full grain leather. So that is another great quality of full grain leather that it just looks better with time versus, I mean, top grain leather can do the same thing. It can develop a patina, but it's not going to be as intense. It's not going to be as strong as with full grain leather. So why 
If genuine leather is such crappy leather, why are all of these companies using it? That is the big question. And the answer, the simple, easy answer, maybe you can guess it, is that they just want to make money. <laughs> That's all there is to it. They just want the money. They want something that's cheap, easy, fast to produce so that they can make their money. And honestly, I am convinced that the term genuine leather was coined by a marketing department in some major company. I, I'm convinced that that is where that term came from because the word genuine, it it has a positive connotation to it, right? It, when you think of something as being genuine, you think of it as being authentic, real, good, high quality. You think of all of those things when you hear the word genuine. And that is unfortunately just not the case for genuine leather. So I, I am completely convinced I would not be surprised at all if that term genuine leather was was coined by some marketing department somewhere in the world at some point in time because i mean they would have thought okay here we've got this leather bag yes technically it is real leather but it's cheap leather it's not good quality it's not going to last but we want to we want to make it sound as good as we possibly can so what can we call it i got it let's call it genuine leather that sounds good. That sounds like it's high quality, like it's premium. We'll say that, that this is genuine leather. Makes sense, right? I, I would not be surprised if that is what happened. And now you walk into any major store nowadays and you go see all the bags and you will see on there that a lot of them say made with genuine leather. And they parade that around even like, like it's something great. Like, oh yeah, this is genuine leather. It's so good. It's so high quality. Uh, they, they make it seem like it's something so great and positive. And unfortunately, it works. A lot of people don't even think twice and they buy those genuine leather goods over and over and over again every couple years because their bags keep wearing out and they need new ones. <laughs> so their marketing strategy, unfortunately, does work. Those people, you know, I mean, all of us, right? We love to find a good deal. We love to find something that looks good, that's nice quality, that we don't have to pay a ton for. But when you think about it, you will spend so much more money over the course of your lifetime buying genuine leather bags than you will if you were to just fork out a ton of money right at once to get a full grain leather bag. So if we focus just on bags for a minute, I like to make bags, that's what I make most, so that's kind of where I'm focusing. But this can go for any other leather product. If you buy a genuine leather bag, you use it every day, for two years, it starts to wear out, it breaks, you can't fix it. You have to go out and buy another one. Say say it's a $40 bag or something, or maybe it will be generous, a $60 bag. You, good deal, looks nice, high quality. You buy it, use it for two years, can't use it anymore. So you go out and you buy another $60 bag two years later. Do that every two years or so the rest of your life that is so much money that you have spent just on one bag every few years versus if you buy a bag that is full grain leather you will, yes you have to pay a ton outright and you may not be able to afford it right away you may have to save up your money for it for a little bit before you're able to buy it but if you do that you only have to buy it once and then you can use it the rest of your life and a lot of times too even 
um, especially smaller leather crafters, they know the leather obviously can last forever, but you know, over time the stitches may give out or a rivet may give out. So a lot of smaller leather crafters, um, they will allow you to send in their, send in your bag, um, and they will repair it and fix it and send it back to you so that you can keep using if something does start to wear out. It's not going to be the, the leather that will wear out. It'll be something else like the stitches or um, the hardware, things like that. So you can quite literally use that same bag the rest of your life and it will continue looking better the more that you use it. So yeah, you may be spending, you know, two, three hundred dollars on one bag. But when you compare that to spending sixty dollars every other year the rest of your life, that actually amounts to a lot less paying three hundred dollars for one bag for the rest of your life. Like, for example, if you were to buy a sixty dollar bag every other year, Um, because it starts to wear out and you need a new one, it would only take you one decade to reach $300. So over that decade, you would have spent $300 on um, genuine leather bags versus if you had saved up your money, bought from a small crafter, and gotten a $300 full grain leather bag and use that the rest of your life I mean even even if you only live another 20 years or so (laughs) you know it would still be worth it for you in the end it would still be more cost effective for you to pay more money outright than to just pay a small amount every other year so whereas you know you spend three hundred dollars on a bag for the rest of your life with full grain leather um with genuine leather i mean if you still have another 40 years in you you would end up spending twelve hundred dollars if you lived another 40 years you'd end up spending twelve hundred dollars on genuine leather bags over the course of your lifetime versus that one $300 bag that you bought 40 years ago, you know? So yes, it can be nice to buy genuine leather because it's cheap and, you know, maybe that's all the money that you have in the moment. But if you were to save up that money, save up that $60, over time so that you could buy a really nice high quality bag and use it the rest of your life then i mean in in my opinion that's the better way to go (laughs) you know it may take more patience because you have to wait to get a new bag but it's going to save you money in the long run And you're going to make that small crafter so happy. You're going to help their small business grow as well. And you won't be contributing um, to all of the trash that is going into the landfills as well if you just buy one bag and use it the rest of your life. With buying a genuine leather bag, you know, you use it for a couple years and then it breaks and you have to throw it away and it just goes into the landfill. And I mean, yes... Leather is a natural product, so it won't take as long to break down. But because of that plastic coating that they're putting over the top, that will take hundreds, even thousands of years maybe to break down. So you would be um, every couple years kind of contributing that little bit of plastic into the landfills when you really don't have to. And then when you also consider that to make that plastic coating that goes over genuine leather, it can release toxins into the environment whenever they make it, that it also is not good for the earth. So for any of you that are a little bit more earth conscious, I guess, um, that is another thing to think about with buying genuine leather is that you are going to be contributing to that problem that we have in this world 
today of just having so much waste, so much that we throw away all the time. And honestly, when you think about it too, I mean, genuine leather is the epitome of our consumer society today. You buy something that's cheap for a good price, you use it until it starts to break in a few years, and then you just throw it away and get a new one. You know, this society that we live in is all about just buy, 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 consume, consume, consume. And then if you don't want it, give it away, throw it away, do whatever, and just buy something else. And genuine leather really helps perpetuate that consumer idea that, oh, my bag is starting to break. It's starting to not look um, as pretty and nice anymore. So I'm just going to, I'm going to donate it if it's still intact, or I'm just going to throw it away because it's fallen apart and I'm going to get something new. When really we should be trying to find good, valuable products that we love that can last us the rest of our lives so that we're we're not giving in to that marketing scheme of all of those companies that are saying hey you need this buy this it's great it's awesome it's good quality if you get this thing then you'll be happy so falling into that ideology is how those companies make their money. So by continuing to buy those genuine leather things, um, you are helping to make them more and more money when it's really not even worth that much money at all. You're, you are paying four times the price. When, when you buy... A genuine leather bag, I mean, if it's a $60 bag, chances are it only took $10 to produce, but you're paying $60 for it. That That is how it, it works, unfortunately, <laughs> with retail stores. Um, you're paying four times the price for something, or at least, at the very least, you're paying double what that item is worth. So... Instead of falling into that trap, instead of thinking, oh, this is genuine leather, that's so great, and it's only $40, you need to stop and think, you know, look at it, is this a really good quality, is this going to last me, am I still going to love this a few years later, will it still be in one piece a few years later, even, or would it be better to you know, save up my money and look for something better that's going to last me a long time. So that's just something to think about. I just hope that this will help you to be a more informed consumer. So, I mean, if you still want to buy those genuine leather bags, then sure, go for it. Um, but as long as you know... <laughs> Yes, this technically is real leather, but it's not good quality leather. As long as you know that, then that is enough. Honestly, it bothers me that all of these big major companies are are profiting off of the lack of knowledge that consumers have. And it's not even the, the consumer's fault, really. It's it's the companies that are hiding the truth, that are advertising something that's completely false. That is what the problem is. And so I just hope that this can help you understand that genuine leather is not good leather. It's made up of that bottom side of the hide that's really um, thin. Those fibers are loosely woven together. They're going to break apart over time. It doesn't have a natural, beautiful quality, so it's finished with plastic. And these companies are advertising like it's something so great and so high quality. Even even designer goods. I mean, that's, that's a subject for another day. But I will never buy anything designer, ever, because it is... I mean, you're paying hundreds of dollars for something that's only worth $40. It's awful. Maybe we'll talk about that in another episode. <laughs> but 
my goal is really just to help to help you be more informed um, whenever you go out and you purchase things. And another thing to note too is that there are a lot of leather crafters out there that do use the term genuine leather. Um, that's another thing too is genuine leather, uh, it can kind of have two meanings, I guess. It can refer to that specific cut of hide that is on the bottom that, that is that low quality leather. But it can also be used in a general broad sense for any type of leather. Someone could say this is genuine leather and mean just that it's real leather. They could not be referring to that specific cut. So there are some leather crafters out there that I have seen that do use good high quality leather, but um, they advertise it as genuine leather. They say this this is made with genuine leather. And the way that they're meaning it in that sense is just that it's made with real leather, um, not specifically that that bottom cut of the hide. But I personally don't like doing that. I don't like advertising because I know I know that consumers are used to seeing that term genuine leather. So when they see it, they're like, oh yeah, genuine leather, that's good. Um, And if, you know, if they see, for example, full grain leather, they can be like, oh, well, what's that? But I just, I don't, to me, advertising my products as genuine leather, I don't like it because to me, it kind of just perpetuates the problem. It kind of buys into that um, marketing scheme of those companies, I guess. So I will never say that any of my products are made with genuine leather. I, I won't, (laughs) I won't degrade my products in that way. I guess I won't lower, you know, lower the standards at all. I will never use genuine leather. I will never use that cheap cut. I will never label my products as genuine leather, even though technically, you know, if you're using it in that broad sense, Yes, all of my goods are genuine leather because it's full grain leather, but that kind of just buys into that idea that genuine leather is good leather. And I just, I don't want to do that. I would rather inform everyone about the truth, which is what I'm trying to do in this episode. I would rather try to inform and educate people than just perpetuate that problem of um, of companies trying to make out genuine leather as something that's really great when it's not. So I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope that you learned something from it. If you have any questions about it or if I didn't explain it well, then definitely say something in the comments below and I can kind of um, help under- help you guys understand better. Also, let me know if um, you would like to hear anything specific. If you have any questions about leather, leather craft, anything, let me know. I want to try and make a few more of these podcasts, um, more informational podcasts for now. That's kind of where I'm gearing towards. So they'll be about topics like this, about the different cuts of leather and the qualities and what you want to look out for. But thank you for joining me in this episode and we will see you on the next one.